That one drove the pigeons away. Oh, Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for that extraordinary performance by Asher Gamedza and another time ensemble recorded on our rooftop in historic Cairo. I'm Jeff Arnell, the executive director of Black Mountain College Museum and Arts Center here in Asheville, North Carolina. And it's a very happy day and I'm very excited to be joined by Asher for a conversation. Welcome Asher. Yeah, thanks Jeff. Uh, nice to be with you and uh, greetings to everyone who might be watching. Thanks. Uh, first off, your performance was absolutely wonderful. It was so powerful. Uh, thank you so much for um, all of your work and the, the ensemble's work uh, that they put into it. Um, you're based in South Africa, but you found yourself working in Cairo. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what we just heard and the ensemble and also the significance of the historic setting and its connection to the music? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I guess I'll start with the place and how I find myself here, but I've been in Cairo for about two months. Uh, I came to teach at an autonomous college called the Cairo Institute of Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, where I'm teaching a course on historical consciousness, which is, yeah, basically about different ways of thinking about history, uh, different ways of asking questions about history, I guess, ultimately to see you know, the world has uh, been produced and made by people and therefore can be acted on and in to be changed in, in other ways. So this is kind of the context of, 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 of why I'm here, um, but always, you know, music is a part of where, where, wherever I go as well. And um, I was lucky enough to meet uh, a good friend, someone who I call a good friend now, uh, Maurice Luca, who is uh, one of the musicians in the band who kind of, um, yeah, he really helped me. He linked me to everyone who, who plays in the ensemble. So Maurice is playing um, keyboards and synthesizers. Um, and um, Eddie is playing bass, sound and um, the mix which are um, for the for the video and then um, Sharif is playing guitar and um, Alan Bishop is playing saxophone yeah and so we're basically playing some music of my uh, well the first the first the first tune which is a suite which is three pieces uh, together is of my my recent album, Dialectic Soul, which was released earlier this year. Um, and then the three other pieces, um, If It Rains, To Pursue Truth, um, Melancholia and um, ECFG Swing are all new tunes that I haven't actually played with anyone before. So uh, this is a really incredible opportunity to play it with some uh, really great musicians. And um, yeah, so in terms of where we were in the city, I mean, the rooftop is just this kind of magical place. Um, it's, you can see different parts of the city from there. You see a lot of pigeons flying around. Um, and I mean, we're right across the road from some mosques from, I think, the 13th or 14th century. Uh, we're right around the corner from Saladin's Citadel, which was built in the 12th century. Um, and of course, there's all these other layers of history within within Cairo. Um, and so for me, uh, in terms of also the, the course I've been teaching, which is about these 
you know, trying to have a conversation with history and trying to understand the present as part of the same historical process. Um, it's been it's been quite a trip, to be honest, to be in this place where you're surrounded by, um, you know, from from the balcony where I stay, you can see the the, the pyramids of Giza. Mm. Um, so you're continually made aware of all these different layers and levels of history. And at the same time, you know, the contemporary moment that we're in now, um, globally, but also in its particular manifestations here and some of the, I guess, politics of the space, particularly post-revolution here, you're very, you're very aware of the present moment, you know. Um, so I guess the, the, the ideas behind the concepts um, is to, to kind of remember and uh, remember and kind of project and imagine other times, you know, um, and to kind of um, sit in the belief that another time is possible. Um, yeah. That, that's so um, amazing. I can't even imagine uh, being there and being surrounded um, by that, that, you know, weight of history and, and also, you know, also having um, at least being clear eyed enough to see what the future holds. And, um, you know, I have a really close friend who's also a drummer who uh, made, he said, if there is a place to visit, you know, ever on earth, it would be Cairo. And, you know, I have two kids and he said, you, this, I don't know why I wasn't brought here as a kid and why every child in the world isn't brought to Cairo because it does have that um, even as you walk around and he's, as he said, and as you're saying, you could just, it oozes uh, this, this, this weight and understanding and, uh, and it's just so much information and so much history. Um, this actually yeah, leads, absolutely. yeah, it, it leads perfectly into um, another question was about uh, dialectic uh, soul, which, which you played part of, and it's available, which we'll put a link up um, on your Bandcamp uh, page, but so much of that record um, and also the rest of your performance uh, that you just shared with us is rooted in the vibrant and complex musical worlds connecting the traditions of Africa and America through jazz and experimental music and protest music. And I hear both the, the, those very joyful and hopeful spiritual uh, sounds, but they also are alongside a very real and urgent call for social change. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about um, what you're feeling, uh, what comes to mind today uh, that you could share with us about observing both in Cairo and your home in South Africa? I guess in both places there are um, there are aspects of uh, the kind of social condition that are more global in nature and far more particular aspects. But as I kind of alluded to earlier, I think um, you know Egypt is in a very particular phase of its history, kind of um, a lot of which relates to. The revolution in 2011 and um, what many people would speak about is the counter-revolution after that. Um, so I mean one of the, one of the things that um, is so palpable here is the presence of, of, of police um, almost everywhere um, and also you know hearing stories of uh, activists or kind of writers who are um, you know, in jail or have just been arrested. Or, um, so there's very, very much a sense of um, a, a kind of closing down and a repression here. Um, at the same time, you know, people are people are people are making life within that. You know, and I think for me, that's always been one of the one of the most interesting, you know, historical phenomena. To, phenomena to think about is like how, uh, you know, even within moments of intense repressive uh, societies, people are continually 
you know, making life, building, building culture, building cultures of resistance. And that takes different forms, you know, um, through cultural production uh, in certain moments, um, through political organizing in different moments. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, I guess, you know, it's uh, like, like many, most societies are these days, Egypt is a very uh, class-based society, very hierarchical in that sense. Um, there's a lot of people who are who are really poor, you know, and there's there's people who are rich, um, and that relates very much to South Africa, you know. Um, I mean, South Africa is uh, classified, I think, as one of the one of the two most unequal societies in the world, you know. Mm. So, um, and that 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 inequality is uh, is racialized as it's classed uh, as it's gendered um, but yeah I mean within all of these moments there's always there's always movement you know uh, of different kinds and I think there's interesting things happening back home in terms of cultural work and um, yeah resistance in different kinds in different ways I mean I think the you know, the COVID moment and the way it's been mobilized um, and weaponized in many ways has exacerbated a lot of, uh, exacerbated and highlighted a lot of the cleavages and tensions that exist in society already. Um, and the effects of that back home uh, have been really devastating on, on, uh, on particularly working class black people. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a in many ways I think a dark social moment, you know, um, in many respects in many places in the world. Um, but yeah, and I think you know the, the the history of the music, in many ways, always uh, forces us to complexify our thinking as well, right? Like the history of the blues is simultaneously the expression of the social condition of the blues as it is uh, a joyful celebration of life, you know, mm-hmm. um, even in, um, even as, as, as life is not always, always given in that sense. Um, so I think the music uh, emerges in many ways from, from, from that, the contradictions of, of life in that sense, you know, there's, there's an attempt and gestures at, 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 at a, a joy of, and there's attempts and gestures to symbolize and represent um, some of the chaos and the darkness of what's going on as well. And they're not separate. They're not separate in that way. I don't think in the music. Yeah. Yeah. And you could, you could, like I, I mentioned, at least I, I know that I could hear that and it's uh, so loud and clear. And it, it also um, leads to our, my next question is about um, for the about the past you know, year or so, we've been working on this project at the museum, connecting uh, the role of uh, spiritual practice and religious life to the arts. And and, you know, so the bigger question for us is what does faith and arts mean, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I heard your, uh, so I listened to your, to your records and what, what uh, we, sh- you know, you shared with me earlier. Um, and then when I listened to the Cairo performance, I was so moved by, um, I was, I really felt like it was spiritual music. And I, uh, it, it really, it, it really moved me in that way. And I w- was wondering if there was um, any part of your spiritual life or religious life that kind of connects to your artistic practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think ev- even for me, just on the, um, on a daily level, uh, playing drums is uh, part of my meditation um, and it's a very grounding kind of practice you know so um, 
often I think the category of spirituality um, or that as a um, as a term can 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 seem to imply something really big, you know. But for me, I think it I think about it in in the in the practice, you know. Um, and so I definitely understand my 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 playing, even if I'm just sitting uh, in a room playing on my own um, as, as, as a spiritual practice. Um, exactly what that means, you know, I, I, um, the meaning is, is, is elusive, even as it can kind of get towards there. But I think, I'm, you know, I'm a very, I'm a very cerebral person. Uh, my mind is like kind of a very busy place. Mm. Um, and playing music is, is one place where, not the only, but one of the, the, the place where I, where I am most often, where I'm able to kind of uh, tap into another zone, you know. Um, obviously, there's a very kind of, um, in terms of a lot of practicing, there's a lot of uh, kind of working stuff out in your head, you know. Um, but then I also always kind of will just want to play uh, and not not think about stuff in, in, in that way. And I think my approach to composition and kind of arrangement in the context of bands is very similar. Um, so I think each tune has a very, very, very clear concept to me. Uh, and what that concept is, I think, differs from tune to tune. Um, sometimes the concept is just a mood, you know, or a, or, or a feeling that the, the, the melodic parts and the rhythmic parts and whatever feel like together, you know. So um, once once a band has kind of got the concept down, it's, it's all free, mm. you know. So we, uh, the attempt is to, to establish and uh, establish the concept, establish the the theme, and then to play from there from a place and get right. So it's, um, and I think people kind of, uh, if we're able to internalize the concept musically, then we are able to kind of, hopefully, you know, uh, get rid of it in in the sense of like. Uh, thinking about it so much and then play uh, the hope is authentically from that place. Mm -hmm. And I think that to me is a form of spiritual practice um, that is about being connected to a certain health and a certain part of uh, the people you're on this journey with um, and an openness to an openness to kind of an unknown thing, um, which is also, I think, uh, as much as it's a spiritual thing, it's also about uh, the idea of existence or ontology and, and, mm. and, and the, the kind of the statement of, ex of an existence together, you know? Um, mm. And so that's, yeah, I think as much philosophical as it is spiritual, as it is material, you know, it's, uh, it's people playing and, and, and manifesting sound together um, and drawing on whatever the histories of thought, uh, histories of feeling, um, histories of sound uh, that each person is kind of steeped in, you know? Yeah. Do you think about that? Uh, you mentioned uh, building a band and uh, playing, you know, collaborators. Um, when you're thinking about that, how far away kind of depending on the project do you kind of say like in this tradition or that tradition or say more experimental, is it just project to project or piece to piece or um, there is there some sort of, um, are you evol I guess, uh, you know, evolving over time towards or away from any traditions? I mean, you know, I I have a I have an idea of tradition that is very linked to the idea of improvisation. You know? mm -hmm. um, I mean, if we think about there's there's you know there's this very 
it's a very colonial con conception of, of tradition as something that's fixed, um, particularly within the African context, um, as tradition as like this sort of ahistorical, static, non-moving thing. Mm. Um, but I understand, you know, tradition as something which emerges through people grappling with their world, you know, and there's historical resources that are passed down through people, but everyone is continually improvising, right? Um, and that's how, that's how traditions develop. Uh, there's this really nice, uh, I can't remember who wrote it, but I was reading about um, Ornette Coleman. And someone was speaking about, because, uh, you know, obviously when, when Onet uh, released like Shape of Jazz to Come, people were like, what is this? This is not jazz. This is like, this is a, a racket. Um, where's the form? Um, what are they doing? Um, and then there was this other perspective, and i sad that I can't remember the author, but they were saying, no, I mean, Onet is so much in the tradition of blues uh, jazz um, and all of these musics that come before him and he, and he contributes to that. Like there's no ways that we would have Ornette if we didn't have the 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 years of music prior to him. You know? So mm -hmm. in that sense, one is always extending um, a tradition. Um, and I mean, I think the... It's the the music often I guess a lot of my writing from uh, particular rhythmic groove kind of paradigms that I've been checking out so a lot of my writing has a very uh, emerges very strongly from there and um, that often <clears throat> implies or suggests certain ways of playing uh, for other instruments, not necessarily like dictates, but kind of suggests uh, harmonic frameworks or, or non-harmonic frameworks or um, kind of melodic pieces. And a lot of the pieces, I guess, for example, on dialectic soul feel, definitely feel like each of them individually come from somewhere, even as the intention when I was writing, it was not like, oh, I'm going to write like a kind of ornette mm -hmm. kind of melody over this fast like swing thing or whatever. Like, oh, I'm going to do like one South African tune or, or whatever. You know, it's um, it's more that those, uh, those songs came to me through, I mean, my experience in the world, you know which is part of that is sitting in my lounge, listening to records with friends. Yeah. Part of that is involvement in kind of organized political struggle. Part of that is, you know, uh, on particular kinds of spiritual journeys. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what so I was thinking. I mean, the, the album in many ways and the synthesis of my life. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was, um, kind of jump in in my mind too was that uh you know this you're i love that idea of improvisation and as it connects to or kind of even you know really disrupts tradition it, it, it changes the evolution of where we're all going but also it's built with people and people are constantly changing and evolving and there's information coming in and there's mistakes and there's, uh, you know, innovation and experiments and things are just in the, the mixing mm. bowl. Um, and yeah, I think mm. that, uh, Ornette, I mean, you know, uh, you're right. If it couldn't have existed, if, um, all of that, you know, all of that music before him, you know, wasn't established and, you know, tuning i guess uh uh technology or the fact that maybe he played a plastic saxophone or maybe the fact that he uh you know you know in your group uh in in cairo there was a synthesizer or you know these types of things start to push mm -hmm. maybe uh and it's not even pushing boundaries right now in 20 you know 20 mm -hmm. it's uh because it's in mm -hmm. all of our world but uh right. it is interesting to kind of think about 
also this, um, yeah, what is, what is jazz and how it is evolving. And, and I think that leads me to my next question. As a drummer, I just, um, I really love your drumming. And so thank you for thank that. You, and, and you have such a great swing. And um, really, it's so, uh, it's really deep. And uh, I really appreciate that. And I could, I could only uh, imagine the work that has gone into it. But, um, you know, and so practice is evolving, you're evolving. Um, you know, what can you share with um, our audience that, you know, well, who's helped you out along that way? Are these influencers or even today, you know, I know that's a big question, like, cause you could list like 5,000 people, but you know, what are you checking out now that's inspiring you? Yeah. Oh, just uh, one small note is that uh, Maurice's cat is slightly oh, nice. uh, jealous of me <laughs> occupying this place in <laughs> this room, which I think they normally have to themselves. So if okay. you hear some I meowing. Hear we hear... <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I mean, so I would say the, the in the first instance, um, you know, I've learned from the people that I've played with mm. uh, the most. You know, I mean, I never, I never really had the, I never went to school or really to lessons for to for music. Um, and I think in many ways that was, uh, I mean, in many often I think I would like to maybe go to school at some stage. Um, but at the same time, there's something there's something beautiful about the learning process that I that has accompanied me in my kind of journey as a musician, where you kind of figure things out and you you develop your own language for things, mm. you know, and that goes back to like starting to play drums in high school and kind of you know, figuring out how to record your three piece band with like two microphones at your friend's house, you know, um, and, um, you know, trying to work out these, these musical concepts that you kind of intuitively maybe kind of grasp, but have no idea about the language of. Um, so definitely the first, my first teachers have always been the people that I'm with and the context of playing. Um, and, you know, watching a lot of music, uh, I, uh, um, but I just used to watch like so many shows, you know, kind of like, you know, punk gigs, hardcore gigs, uh, reggae shows, hip hop shows, jazz gigs. Um, and so I guess every time, you know, you watch someone, check someone out and they, you know, I don't know, articulate something and you're just like, whoa, I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be something, it can be something so small, like um, a particular way of voicing a, a fill or uh, a particular way of sitting in relation to time. Then you go home and you kind of check that out, you know. Um, but I mean, also definitely over the last five, six years, uh, Louis Moholo, who's a, a kind of a pioneer of free jazz tradition and South African free music, um, who, you know, played with many people, including like Cecil Taylor and um, uh, many South African musicians, like he was part of the Blue Notes. Um, and people around free scene, um, um, Rashid Ali is one of my favorite players. Um, and, uh, you know, Billy Higgins, Ed Blackwell, uh, Alvin Jones has been a huge, a huge mentor, um, in the sense of his records. Uh, I mean, I think, I think in terms of concept and like motion, uh, between Alvin and, and Rashid, I think I've kind of spent the most time thinking and 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 and, and, and try to figure out, you know. Um, but as much as that, you know, like um, Jay Dilla, uh, but also I've spent a lot of time checking out music from like Morocco, particularly Kanawa music, um, and of course a lot of music from back home. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, 
all of all of these different sounds, you know, uh, grooves that you hear and feels that you hear, at like uh, church music is is very much also a part of, uh, I think, a part of my internalized mm -hmm. rhythm. Um, yeah. Um, well, you just yeah, that's a great. A starting point for anyone to kind of uh, <laughs> look into any any of the any person that you just mentioned uh, is uh, is solid gold. So thank you so much uh, uh, for that. Um, you know, um, as we close out um, our session today, do you, what are you working on now? I mean, I know that we are unfortunately, and maybe we'll to steer ourselves out of this uh, this pan the pandemic. Um, and your record came out uh, this year, but and I bet yeah. you were planning to tour it. And um, and but what's what's in the hopper? And if if you could share anything with us, or what to stay tuned for? Yeah. So um, there's a few there's a few records that I would like to record. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where they will find a home yet, in terms of a label. Um, but yeah, I hope. In the next year, there's two or three projects I I would really like to record. So some of the music of the basically the last half of the set that was on the performance, um, those are from a, um, a family of tunes, many of which were written under lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got kind of a whole album work that I would like to, I think, record with the same ensemble. Mm. Um, I like the I like the instrumentation and the kind of limitations and the possibilities of of a kind of two horns uh, bass drums setup and uh, vocalist maybe on some songs. Um, I also want to do a really kind of big band uh, kind of thing um, with some. Uh, some kind of modal tunes that I've been writing as well that might be pushing into the territory of writing for a piano player as well, which is kind of intimidating in a sense because uh, I'm very new to the instrument and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about chords and stuff, you know? Um, yeah. And then a um, couple other things, small projects, small duet projects, um, that I don't know if I can say too much about now, but sure. ho hopefully within the next year or so, um, yeah. they manifest in the world. Yeah. Well, I hope so. And I hope that, um, Asher, you'll be able to come and see us in Asheville someday and, um, in, or mm -hmm. our audience will be, be able great. to see you in uh, the States sometime soon. And, um, you know, Thank you again, because this really, um, when we were first in touch, um, uh, Ravish Maman put us together, and who's also a drummer, which, you know, he, he and I know known each other, I guess, since the mid 90s yeah. or something. And he um, was kind enough to put us in touch. And we've been talking and okay. I, I had no idea that this project was going to turn out uh, the way it did. And when you sent the, uh, you know, the video, it is extraordinary. So Thank you so much. I hope um, hope that you're happy, and we are extremely happy. And it's uh, it really is something, um, at least for uh, I know for our audience sustenance, and we really desperately mm. need it. So thank you again. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the thanks for the opportunity to collaborate. I mean, it's really um, I think one of the major things for me to remember about this whole process is like how it's really been a it's really been a collective production um, from all of the musicians who kind of really gave kindly um, and really, um, yeah, approached the music in a very, I think, humble and way that was really full of integrity and authenticity. Um, to Megid, who's worked really tirelessly on the video. Mm -hmm. um, and Eddie, who's done a lot of work on the mix and the sound um, and bringing a lot of stuff together. Um, it's really been, yeah, people uh, done a lot of work beyond, you know, 
what I could pay them for, you know, and I think that's kind of also something that's important about about the music is that it um it opens up the possibility of of constructing different kinds of relations with each other, you know, yeah. um, that uh, that are that, that are beyond the kind of uh, capitalist social relations. Um, so I'm really I'm really kind of indebted to to everyone who's involved in this project. Um, I'm really grateful to them. Um, and as much as it's, you know, Ashley Gamedza on the thing, it's as much another you know, time ensemble and the work that so many other people put in. You know, that. Yeah, and, and, and Asher, please pass our thanks along because I know that we'll, mm-hmm. we'll credit uh, everyone, but uh, as you said, it's a giant collaborative project and we understand the filming and the recording and so many uh, voices and uh, we, we are so grateful as well. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Well, I hope that we see you soon and be well and, um, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Yeah, sounds good. Peace, Jeff.